muddy boots. We are three weeks into autumn and I am personally very excited to be saying goodbye to summer. What about you? Well, I, I look at it from the moon calendar's perspective and I say, well, we're not really into autumn yet. The autumn actually starts at the autumn equinox, well, which is... Yes, what date? The 20th. You know what? You know that today is March the 26th, don't you? So yeah. I think autumn's begun. Oh, well, don't you right, think? Yeah. Okay, so we're not three weeks into it. We're six days into it. Okay. okay. It seems to be stretching itself summer anyway because it's still really hot. Mm -hmm. Well, it has been really hot. Once those hot days disappear, we'll be able to get outside. We'll be really able to enjoy working in the garden again and get it ready for the cooler months. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of jobs waiting to be done, aren't there? There are lots and lots and lots. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I do, Keith, when, I, when I'm in, you know, usually at this time of the year in our garden, when I have one, because I don't really have one at the moment, is tidy up old spring and summer growth. Yep. Things like removing any annuals that have finished flowering, pruning perennials like hydrangeas, salvias, uh, lavender, catmint, all of those sort of things. All of those prunings then go into the compost bin to help make nutritious compost. Yep. And if you don't have a compost bin, they can be left to slowly decompose and return to the soil. Or you can just chuck them on your lawn and hit them with a mower. There. Run and over that, them and over and over them. That's right, and that's really good for it as well. Absolutely. It adds all that, that nutrition to the soil there. What are you pruning right now? Well, um, I'm, I've gone through and had a look at some of my fruit trees. So the, the espalied apples, for instance, and the, and the espalied citrus, I've gone through and given those a bit of a tidy up. You always summer prune, if, if you've got espalied apples, you summer prune those to get off the, the, the any of the upright growth. So you cut that right back. So you've done that. So I've, I've done, done that, that anyway. yes. Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, um, and then you, you go through and have a look at all your, your uh, well, in my case, all my perennial plants. Just go through and just take the, the dead heads out, out of those. So they don't look ratty, I yeah. guess. That's more than, you know, the best way to sort of look at that. So it's not heavy, not heavy not pruning heavy time. Pruning. It's just no. a light, light tidy up. A very light tidy up. A tidy sure. clean up time. Yep. This is also a great time to give the soil a boost after everything it's been through over summer. Mm -hmm. How do we do that, Keith? And in both the garden and the veggie beds. Right. The way that I do it is using the old, Broad fork. I think that's probably one of the, the, the best tools that you'll ever come across for getting goodness down into the soil and for opening up the soil. So a, an FD Ryan seven tine or a five tine broad fork. I wish I'd got the five tine now. <laughs> Why? Well, the seven's getting giving, getting you know, a bit, uh, a bit, a bit big wide. for me, a bit, bit vigorous. A bit heavy. It's heavy, yeah. So, okay. Um, but, you know, putting that in the ground and then, and then rocking it backwards and forwards and then when you get it down deep enough, just pulling it back, you're just lifting all that soil up. Uh, you're allowing the air and the moisture to get down uh, because we haven't had rain for, for, for a fair amount of time and any rain we get now, you want it to ensure that it's going to get down to that yeah. soil. And the other thing that I do with the, with the broad fork, after I've done the broad fork, I generally go around with some rooster booster or lignite humate or compost and throw that down and then just wash it into those, into those beautiful big deep um, tine holes that we've created. Now, if you're putting that into the into the garden beds with all your plants, you've mm -hmm. got to be pretty careful around the roots of the plants, haven't you? You do. So um, for this time of the year, you, you really should be thinking about having a, a liquid fertiliser, putting that, that, that through rather than something that's going to be worked into the soil. What do you mean? So, so, so you've put your broad fork in, you've done, so you've done that carefully around your plants. Yep. And what sort of liquid fertiliser? So, so yeah, something like Power Feed or Charlie Carp okay. Okay. Uh, are great products to just to give that little bit more stimulation. You want to be seeing if you can just get a little bit more out of those plants before the, the onset of winter and they, they start to slow right down or even go into dormancy. So we can put the, we can put the lignite humates in or the compost yep. and also do the, the Power Feed or the, some sort of liquid yeah, fertiliser exactly. at the same time. Yep. Okay, fantastic. Now, should we be giving giving special attention, attention to their really – well, you mentioned the citrus, you were pruning the citrus, but yep. we should be giving – bit more attention to those sort of heavy feeding plants at the moment as yes, well. Yes, you should. And, you know, a, a good organic citrus fertiliser, um, there's a few of them out there in the market. I, 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 and it won't be at, at, at the big green warehouses. Uh, these are more specific types of organic citrus fertilisers by uh, created by smaller companies. Okay. Like um, I think there's John's, John's or something else. It's, it's oh, a guy's name. Do you remember? Harry's? You remember or Harry's. Is Harry's. It Harry's? Harry's citrus, yeah, citrus, citrus fertilizer. Food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know, I mean, I haven't used it myself, um, but I've heard that that's a really, really good one. And of course, they're such heavy feeders. Neutrog. Neutrog? Have a Neutrog got some good. C they've got a citrus, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think what it's um, called. It's called, it's called Gigantic. 
Is it? Is it? Oh, okay. Oh, you're having a bit. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm having a, a, I'm having a senior, today. I'm having a senior's <laughs> moment day today. Harry, citrus food or Nutrog Gigantic, I think. Well, yeah, but that, yeah, I think that's the, the, the two gigantic. really good ones that yep. we could use. Okay, what is going on in the vegetable garden right now? What's finishing up and what are you planting? Okay, what's what's about to come out? Uh, the tomatoes, they're just about finished their, so their, that's, their little... Crop. End of March, this is the right time yep. now. Yeah, yeah. So they've just about finished totally. Um, so they'll be coming out out of my garden the next few days. I'm letting them sit there for a little bit longer, trying to squeeze out a few more red ones to make a little bit more passata. Absolutely. Um, you know, so that's, uh, that's it. So uh, in the actual beds themselves, of course, I've got Brussels sprouts and they're coming on beautifully because you've got to get your Brussels sprouts in, into the soil in February yep. so that you can be harvesting, you know, ju- yep. July, August, June, July, August. <laughs> You're going to go in very early. Yummy. Um, so, uh, and then of course, I, I've just recently planted garlic. Ah. So, um, you know, that's a, a great crop to get in a little bit early. Okay. Um, and if, if people are, are listening from the hotter climes, then make sure you plant your, your garlic cloves deeper than you would here down in Victoria. We we plant our cloves down about 50, 50 millimetres, mm. uh, where you've got lots and lots of hot temperatures. Best to double that and go down to 100 mil and put your and put your, your cloves down the bottom. Yep. It just gives them a, a, a much better chance of establishing themselves before they, they start um, to, you know, put their leaves up yep. through the surface. Okay. Are you saving any seeds, or are you leaving any plants in the garden to self seed? Do you ever do that? No, I don't. I don't self seed except except for my rocket. Uh, yes. I let I let that come and go all the time. Um, I've just saved some baby sunbeam seeds, so I've let the the, the actual um, bean plants dry out totally in the beds, mm. so they, they're mm. sucking all the goodness out, mm. uh, waiting for them to totally dry out. And then I, I pulled those up um, and then divided out the pods and chipped, spit accessible. out the beans and put those into a paper bag with a, a silica gel in there to keep the moisture out, and then they've gone into the fridge. So they're all ready to go for next year. And I've actually sent some <laughs> off to a, to um, some people that follow me uh, way up in northern New South Wales. So they've got some well, baby sunbeams up there. Yeah, so That's it's great so to share. About sharing, exactly. It is about, about sharing. Sharing you know? seeds, that's fantastic. Now, our vegetable garden is one area that is definitely ready for planting mm-hmm. and you very kindly gave us a variety of chilli plants last week which mm-hmm. are growing very happily in their new beds. What else do you suggest we should be planting right now? Okay, rather than rather than um, looking at putting in, um, in, in brassicas at the moment, I'd suggest that you start sowing seeds for all your brassicas. Okay. So your seeds, your collies, your, your cabbages, your broccoli, um, all those sorts of things. So start se- sowing seeds for those now because they're best to go in a little bit later when, when they're a bit bigger because um, if you put them in now as seedlings, you're, you're going to be out there with a, a fly swat, swatting away those white cabbage butterfly oh. things, you know, those horrible <laughs> white things because yeah, they'll we just... Do decimate your actual plant. So I always sow my brassicas later on so that they've got a good chance to, to be actually, you know, pest-free without any uh, aphids or yeah. butterfly caterpillars and all this sort of rubbish. So we should be sowing, excuse my voice, we should be sowing seeds into our little pots, little our pots, little paper pots. Little paper pots are great. And putting them in our greenhouse, which we don't have. Put That's all right. Inside. You can <laughs> you can buy a little greenhouse from Bunnings or any else. True, we could yep. buy a little mini one. That's true. Okay, that's something we should think about. Okay. Dividing and propagating plants from cuttings can be done now. Mm-hmm. Uh, division is done easily by gently lifting the plant from the soil, dividing at the roots, and then replanting and watering in well. Yes. Uh, there is a long list of perennials that can be divided, such as Japanese windflowers, dahlias, salvias, sedums, ornamental grasses. Mm-hmm. What else? What else can you think of that we can divide? And this is the right time to do that. Well, if, if, you've, got, if you've got something like a, an oak leaf hydrangea, Oh, yeah. They're fantastic Beautiful. to actually go and, 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 and you know divide those because yeah. you can actually get quite a lot of cuttings off those. Well, any type uh, of hydrangea. Not, well, yeah, any, type. any type. Yeah. The macrophyllas, obviously, you can. Yep. Okay. Um, but the, 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 the oak leaf hydrangea is, is great if, you, if you've got a, a nice sharp knife and just go through and just cut off half the plant or a quarter of the plant and then pot it up. Um, and it's a great time to be doing that now. Yeah, and that is very easy. Can you give us a quick lesson on propagating... Oh, you just talked about the hydrangeas, but mm-hmm. what, is, what about uh, something like a, a, a salvia? Salvias. Well, once again, you can you can 
do root division of salvias rather than, than cuttings. Okay. Um, if you've got a big enough one, they're very, very easy to, to actually do the, to, to get a knife down there and cut and divide them the same way as you do a hydrangea. Yep. Failing that, then um, if you take um, the, the top, say the top, um, 100 mil of, of the, the actual plant off, cut that off, but cut it cut it just below a set of, a set of leaves or a set of, no, nuts, set of nodes. Yep. And then you need to dip that into a rooting hormone powder. Or honey. Or honey is even better because that's a, a, a natural antibiotic. Yep. So dip that, dip those in and then put them into, into a, a nice open sort of um, growing medium. Something okay. like a, you can, a mix with a bit of perlite or sand or something. Uh, or even, if you like, you can just stick them into a little little thing of water and they yeah, will, they will develop watch, their, their, their root system in the water and you can see that happening. Grow. That's yeah. a bit of fun. So that all way. those sorts of things can be actually done now, including, you know, azaleas and rhododendrons. They yeah. can be all all propagated exactly the same way. It's such a great you know? idea because you can save money, you can Miles. share with friends, it's, 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 and it's fun and yeah. it's, it's satisfying to watch. And, of course, the Very ornamental cute. grasses, a yes. great time to be doing to be cutting those back and dividing yes. those up. So, I can see a whole backyard of them from here that we're all done you, that way. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Beautifully done by you. Thank you very much. And we've got them growing amazingly in the back garden. So we um, cut them back to how far back do you cut those ornamental mental grasses to? If, you, if you're going to be cutting them back so that you're going to divide them, then I wouldn't cut them back any further than about 200 mil off the ground. Okay. They've still got to have a little bit of life and a little bit of green in, in those stems and so forth so that they can then be opened up and they've got energy and storage to put a new root system on. And if we're just cutting them back to keep them in the ground, though, we wait. Do we wait until winter to do that? Wait, wait until they've gone totally dormant. Okay. Um, and the beauty about those sorts of grasses is, it, is it, it, you can create uh, a mulch from those that will last for years and years and years. Fantastic. Um, and the best way to do that is, is whether I use a pair of electric shears, yeah. electric hedge, hedge yeah, cutters or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just keep on slicing it down all the way down to the down to almost the very, very ground itself. Okay. And then just cut that up and, and spread, it, spread around. it around and it's a fabulous mulch. Fantastic idea, Keith. Thank you very much. Okay, now the lawn. Mm -hmm. What man maintenance does it need at this time of the year? The um, with lawn, once again, a broad fork, going around with a broad fork will... We'll, Keep that moisture down and, and allow air and everything else to get down there, allow yep. the earthworms and the microbes to get down nice and deep. It'll encourage deep roots for, for, for lawns, providing you're keeping the grass on top nice and high. Yes. So, um, for instance, my lawn at the moment is cut on the second highest um, height on the mower mm. um, and that will stay that way right until spring. Mm. So I keep keep mm, the grass keep nice and nice and long yep. all the way through until spring, yep. um, and and giving it a feed now is is a great thing just to force that grass along with a little bit of extra tucker. Okay, so, what tucker? Um, I always just use, just use Rooster Booster. Okay, you know it's a great product from Nutrog. Yep. It's a lot cheaper than Dynamic Lifter. Yeah, um, it's a bigger bag than Dynamic Lifter, um, and it goes further. <laughs> That's what we want. Then. That's exactly Nutrog's what we want. Rooster Booster. Okay, it might seem a little early to be planning the spring garden, but it's not. This is the time to be planning and planting spring bulbs, either in the garden or in pots. Things like daffodils, hyacinths, freesias, jonquils, Dutch irises, etc., etc. Yep. Here's a little tip too when planting. Bulbs don't mind being crammed in quite close together and look so much better when planted en masse, don't you think? They look fabulous, yeah. Rather than spaced widely apart where, you know, it looks a bit sort of average. Uh, you could plant some violas or alyssum in the garden or the pot to give it interest through winter while waiting for those bulbs mm -hmm. to appear. Yeah, what do yep. you think? Looks great. Looks great. There Looks you go. great. Looks great. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for that addition. Autumn leaves can be a bit of a pain to deal with, but they make a great carbon material for the compost bin. Mm -hmm. Just pile up the leaves and alternate them with a layer of green material like grass clippings and fruit and vegetable scraps and let it break down over winter. Alternatively, they can be shredded and spread over the garden beds mm -hmm. like we were just sort of talking about as mulch to help stop those pesky weeds from taking over. Exactly. And if you're going to compost leaves such as um, yeah. oak leaves, for instance, and yeah. they're, they're, they make a fabulous compost at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, but if you're going to use oak leaves for your compost, when you put them in, I, I, I would suggest you put a light little covering of lime over the top. Right. Because... Um, oak leaves are deficient in calcium. Yeah. So by adding calcium, you'll help 
to break those leaves down more quickly. Okay, oak and they leaves. make a fabulous compost. Anything else other than oak leaves that need that? Bit um, of yeah, some of the calcium? some of the um, liquid ambers okay. are that problematic, and also pear. Pear leaves, All right. they need a little bit of additional food as well. We don't have any of those, so I no. don't have to worry about that. Okay, I can't think of, I don't know if you've thought of anything else, but I was going to say, last of all, don't forget to enjoy this glorious time of the year when so much of the garden turns to various shades of yellow, orange, red, burgundy, all those colours. Perhaps the best lesson our gardens can teach us is to remember to enjoy them in the present, even while making plans for what they may become in the future. Muddy Boots. Muddy boots.